for the party. So uh, let's let's get this started. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Stack Ops. I don't know if we were the first uh, OpenStack distribution in town. Uh, I can tell you that our first effort uh, was in Bexar. Okay, so we've been in the uh, in the uh, in the arena for a while, although we are based in Europe where things are kind of flat around OpenStack. We do have some uh, over 34,000 downloads of our distribution. It was Vexar, Cactus, and all that. Um, we have a lot of deployments worldwide. And all this vision I'm going to tell you about uh, comes directly from all the feedback we get from, uh, from, from our users, right? So we're kind of the, one of the usual suspects in this kind of, uh, in, the, in the summits. Uh, you can find us uh, uh, at, at any time. We've also been speaking in different uh, events worldwide. This is uh, a, a one of our partners made this uh, um, event in Sao Paulo. We've, we've spoken in, in um, Israel, in the States, and so everywhere. So we kind of also evangelize people on the use of OpenStack. And we get also the feedback, direct feedback after our talk. And it's not like this event, like we, we talk with OpenStack guys, so the feedback is usually positive. We also have some uh, uh, bad uh, uh, feedback as well from, from some people at some point. Okay, this is what, I'm, what we're gonna cover. This is not a technical t um, talk, so I'm gonna just uh, tell you what you already know about the OpenStack evo evolution. I'm gonna give you a couple of, of hints on how, what we see. Uh, what is the goal? of OpenStack in the coming year? What should be the goal? Why the ecosystem is relevant? Ha what is this of the foundational tool which gets title to this session? And of course, our vision on how that is going to be, to be uh, how that is taking, is taking place. So there is no doubt that OpenStack has evolved to a level of maturity, no matter what Garner says. Uh, I missed the guy from Garner in the analyst panel, so, but these guys, I don't think uh, they, they, they understand properly what OpenStack is. Uh, what I can tell you is that there is three letters ago in Cactus, there was a deployment called Mercado Libre who had uh, a, a session before that had 400 physical servers running in production with Cactus, right? You know, if you're telling that is immature, you're kind of insulting these guys, right? And they are brilliant. So they made it work. Uh, maturity, it, it, it's something that you need to define. So um, we're going to talk about stability. OpenStack is pretty stable. Uh, we have a few telcos working with OpenStack. In our case, we have Telefonica, the third largest telco in the world, with working with OpenStack in some services. So I guess it's stable because these guys demand a certain, that level of, uh, of, uh, of a stability. Okay. Um, you know, I've been selling OpenStack for two years already, and I have to change my speech every six months. So initially it was like, I would challenge people, ah, that feature might not be important. You know, how, how, how often are you gonna use that? Right now, I challenge them to find a tool that can do what OpenStack can do. You know, with no risk of losing that customer. It's like, hey, you go tell me who's doing this better than OpenStack, and they might find it, but then, in six months' time, we're going to be there. All right? Um, what is this about the data center colonization? This is the next challenge we have. Okay. Prior to IT, uh, I studied biology. And there's some things I learned, some things I for most of the things I forgot, right? Uh, then I had to get a real job, and I joined IT. But I kept this with me, because this applies to IT, to biology, and to other uh, businesses. Uh, this is the uh, principle of the theory of evolution of species uh, stated by Darwin a long time ago. And it says that it is the ones who adapt better who will survive. When you, when you look at the, um, at the uh, uh, species taxonomy, the family that is uh, best in doing this, in, adap in, in adapting to, to different ecosystems, it's not the, the strongest, it's not the mammals, it's not the reptiles, it's the insects. So I'm sorry to say that OpenStack is the insect family, 
and all the companies and all the people working on that are kind of insects. Sorry, but uh, <laughs> how, how is this uh, uh, happening? Uh, this data center colonization uh, is based on the ecosystem, the different companies, the different insects that build OpenStack. There are different strategies, different locations, there are different targets, there are different um, businesses, different sectors, different industries that can run OpenStack. So th there are many different ways of, uh, of having OpenStack uh, set up. So let's, let's put a little bit of, of perspective into, into that. First of all, I want to, I want to, to, to clarify that there there I, I understand there are three different business strategies uh, to deploy OpenStack. I'm talking about deployment only, to deploy OpenStack. You have the toolkit. Guys who uh, have the time, the resources, the capabilities to get the OpenStack vanilla and start working on that and build a whole lot of things on top. Mercado Libre is one of the examples, but there are some other people that actually don't need any distributions or any uh, other products around OpenStack. So the amount of services you have to put on top, and you can measure that in time, in resources, or in uh, consultancy from any of the companies around here, is, I don't know, 80%, something like that, okay? Then you have the distros. I mean, we were the first, we led the way, and there, there are other companies doing that, Canonical followed, and then Red Hat and Rackspace and all the big guys are doing distributions as well. Um, to help you deploy with their own reference architectures helps you deploy OpenStack uh, in an easier way. But it's still, you have a distro, but you don't have a solution or a, pro or a, or a, or a real deployment. You, you need to work on that as well. You need to, to invest on integrating that into your specific, uh, or the specific solution, building around that the specific solution you want to have. And then there's the product, which takes you one step forward because it, it does already integrate some other components that are not uh, specifically from OpenStack. With that, you still have to add some consultancy to that. So there's no magic here. There is no, uh, I have OpenStack, I put it there and everything works, okay? There's some work to do prior to deploying OpenStack and uh, after you deploy OpenStack as well. The, that will condition also the adoption of OpenStack. And there are five different factors in which you're gonna be um, moving to find what is the adoption curve of OpenStack worldwide. So you have the cultural, uh, legal, technology, business, and financial. Some of them are more flexible than others, right? Uh, legal is something you're not gonna change in the short term. Financial is something you're not gonna change. Well, you have flexibility, but it's just you know, in, a, in one way, all right? So you're not gonna be, the financial, the budget your company or your customer has is what it is, and then you cannot exceed that much, right? Um, there are cultural factors as well. When you look at, for instance, the way in Europe we like to control and have a better planning because we're more conservative if you want to look at it that way than for instance in the US or Latin America, that will affect the adoption curve. This is, this is mainly the reason why Europe is lagging in, in, the, in, the, in the open stack or the cloud computing in general adoption. Then there are different ways of doing business as well. Um, you know, it's kind of a liturgy you, you have to go through when you want to make businesses in different parts of the world. Um, ideally in Japan, you, the, it, I mean, you need to meet people there. You need to work your lead. You don't, it's, it's not that, it's, it's also conservative in that way. In Latin America, it might be easier just to get something tested or get something um, uh, deployed. And also the technology, you know, the, you need to get people knowing the technology you're implementing also in your OpenStack clouds. So you're gonna, we're gonna move in these two, uh, uh, with these two variables to meet all those five different factors. One of them is uh, the geographic uh, proximity of the OpenStack vendor, the OpenStack uh, uh, cloud guy. Uh, local does matter. You know, when you're doing business in some places, you need to see face-to-face -face people. So big clouds like the Amazon cloud does not have the same success in some places because they don't have a face. In Europe, in Latin America, you need a face. You need people to go and visit your client. If you, if you want to, a big investment or, or a large deployment, you most likely have to go down there, have to go there and then start 
visiting over. So geographically will help you manage, for instance, the uh, business, cultural, and legal uh, factors, okay? How we cover that in our um, specific uh, uh, way of, of, of putting that strategy in, into, into, into real life. We have partners, for instance, US, we have a Microtech uh, who will actually drive all the leads we get from the, from the US because they're, they're here, they know how to make business here. Same as in uh, China, we're not gonna go all the way to China to make business there, not yet. We might do that in the, in the, in the long term. We get stack scale deploying, we get uh, dual tech in Brazil, Chile, so we get a, a bunch of, of partners that will get OpenStack close to you, right? The other factor is, uh, is, uh, is about flexibility. And as I said, it's flexibility, but you need to, to put that into, uh, into specific, uh, uh, well, it's not, it's, not, it's not flexibility in, one, in, in two ways, right? This is, this is just in, in, in one way. Uh, what I mean from f with, with the flexibility is that you're gonna be able, you're gonna have to adapt to the existing technologies your customer has. So for instance, if they want to use some kind of a storage that they have probably invested some money on already, you need to give them the choice to use that storage. You don't need to force them to use whatever you're using in your distribution or in your OpenStack deployment. You need to have, um, you know, solutions to match their specific uh, technology. So in terms of storage, in terms of networking, uh, monitoring, or billing systems, or hardware, right? The hardware bit, everybody, everybody understood that, but then that flexibility when you're talking about reference architecture is not that clear for most of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, of the players around, okay? So with that, you're also gonna cover the rest of the uh, of the factors, and you're going to be able to move on uh, on on those five factors. Okay, what's this about the foundational uh, the foundational tool? Um, there is one more step, and we're ready to take that one more step to the graphic that we 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 saw before about the uh, three different ways of deploying. There are four different ways to. Uh, deploy and operate your OpenStack cloud. So you get the three we talked about and then you get the OpenStack on, on steroids or on vitamins, whatever you want to, to, to call it. This is the way um, we envision the foundational tool, the OpenStack of the future, is the way you're gonna have all these choices we were talking about before. You will, you're gonna give those choices to your customers, right? So they're gonna be selecting and configuring easily how the OpenStack cloud is gonna look like, what are they gonna use in their OpenStack cloud, and the choice to have different flavors of OpenStack clouds is also something that will, int will be of, of interest to them. Uh, they might have some um, storage uh, solution with a quality of service, very uh, low level, uh, very cheap for specific services. They might have some other storage solutions with a higher quality of service backups and all that for uh, high-end services, all right? So the open second vitamins is, is just a configurator you give your customers in which you, you, they are able to select one of the solutions that it's integrated in your, in, your whole, uh, in your whole panel. In order to have that, you need to keep in mind three things. They're gonna tell you don't make me spend. Use what I have. You know, I already bought a NetApp filer and I spent $2,000 there, so I don't want to use whatever, right? Or I have my Dell hardware that I just bought or I have my uh, Hyper-V hypervisor, which I use, or my VMware, which is, I'm fine with that, I'm fine paying that. So uh, reutilize uh, whatever these guys are using, you need to be able to make an OpenStack cloud out of that. Don't make me think. I mean, you guys don't, would probably don't care if it's open stack or not, right? They want it simple. You know, they, they probably don't want to learn Chef, or uh, uh, sorry, uh, Chef. If, if they know Chef, they might deploy with Chef, but if they don't, they don't want to invest in learning Chef or Puppet or Juju or whatever tool that, that deploys open stack. They want it simple. They want to have their cloud. Their business is not deploying open stack. Their business is whatever is running on top, OK? 
Okay? You need to keep that in mind. And don't make me change my business model. So basically, you know, I want to do this. I've been doing this for years. I don't really want to start uh, rethinking whatever I, you, you're suggesting. Right? I'm buying off a cloud from you. I'm not buying off consultancy on my business stuff. If I do, well, you, you might also have that uh, integrated into your full offer. But ideally, these guys want the cloud, right? And they're going to be running their business as, as, they, as they are. And very important, it needs to be non-disruptive. Any change you make in a data center needs to be non-disruptive for the businesses running on those data centers and those servers. So there's not going to be a, a change. There's going to be a, a, a lower performance. It's not gonna, there's not going to be a, a lower um, accessibility. It it's just needs to be as it is or better. If you want to change it, it needs to be better. Okay? You just need to make it. Uh, uh, sure, you have uh, you have that in place. Okay, how do we envision this? Um, we have the the OpenStack environments. Uh, we call the Stack Ops Enterprise Edition, with, with which comes with a metal as a service solution. Probably you might be liking to use that, but you can integrate also. This is this is what we call the Stack Ops Portal. It's a web desktop that allows you to integrate different solutions, different services that your system administrators are going to use to manage their OpenStack cloud. It's not restricted to OpenStack. It extends OpenStack. So if you want to add a monitoring system, you can add it easily as a plugin. If you want to add a reporting tool, you can add it easily. If you want to add your uh, NetApp manager, you can add it easily, or whatever kind of manager you want to have uh, for your storage. You can also add it easily here. So this is the way your sysadmin is going to have all the tools to manage the services in the data center within the same portal. If you don't want to use the head manager for uh, deploying OpenStack, we're fine with that as well. The Stack Ops portal works on any OpenStack, right? So if you want to use the SUSE um, um, configurator, you can, you can use that. Or if you want to use UU or, or, or CHEP or, or Puppet, you can build plugins uh, to, to do that. Keep, keep in mind that this tool, um, it, it helps you to deploy OpenStack, but deployment is not important anymore. I mean, the goal is to have OpenStack running in your data center for 10 years. So if you're having a deployment done in five days or in one month, uh, when you compare it to the time OpenStack is going to stay in your data center, it is just not relevant. Right? So you deploy it wh how in, in the way you want. Uh, then you need to find the right tools to manage your, your, your different services running on OpenStack or around OpenStack or however you want to, you want to look at it. Okay? So this is one of the tools that will actually, um, um, what, what we call the foundational tool of the data center. The, all the, we want to have OpenStack as the, as the Plesk of the data center. Plesk serves to, to do anything on the server. OpenStack is empowered to do anything you can think of in the data center. Okay, so um, this is it. I I would like to um, uh, to take questions if you have. Uh, is it use of access integrations? You can build new applications. This is an SDK. You can build things on top, or you can integrate existing web applications, or you can create them. It's all built in the extension JavaScript. Uh, this is the way we think OpenStack will evolve in the future, uh, being the center, the corner store of, the, uh, of, the, of, your, uh, of your data center. Right? So thank you very much. Any questions I can take now? Yes. We have, we have a, um, our own component. It's called the, uh, the head manager. They're actually as, uh, as long as you turn on your servers in, in the same network, it sends an agent, discovers the uh, capacity of that, and you can add those into, the, uh, into the, uh, an OpenStack zone. Uh, you can manage with the head manager different OpenStack zones with different architectures. So it's actually a multi-zone, multi-tenant uh, component. And you know, it takes 15 minutes just to, to get uh, an, a new zone deployed with the, uh, with the service. It has a pool of servers that uh, you allocate to one of the zones you have just created. 
and it's, uh, it's, it's up uh, within minutes. And you also have high availability uh, capabilities uh, with those. You can configure uh, the way to replace a broken server fairly easily. It's not open source. It's not open source, yeah. Yeah? Questions, yes. Yeah. That's it, that's it, that's the goal is to administer anything you have, anything you have. And ideally, you're gonna be able to manage different OpenStack clouds with this, right? You're gonna be able to manage other things uh, from here. So, I mean, the, the goal is to have OpenStack uh, uh, base, it's all driven by, by Keystone, but uh, again, you can, you can, you decide what you want to put inside here. Okay, thank you.